Let's turn to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. <clears throat> I remember hearing someone in seminary make a comment. He said, the most important part of the message is the invitation. And uh, I remember that. And uh, I think what he meant by that is that uh, being able to call to response, you know, the people in the audience is the most important part of a message. Well, Jesus, we're going to see in John chapter 6 today, gives an invitation. And uh, perhaps if that uh, seminary professor had been grading <laughs> Jesus' invitation in John chapter 6, or someone who, you know, pastors a mega seeker-sensitive type church or judging Jesus' invitation in John chapter 6, he would probably get an F. <laughs> He'd probably be criticized because Jesus has the audience right there in front of him. Yet of that big crowd that had joined him, only 12 people <laughs> remained behind. And so what we see here is, what is it that Jesus preached in John chapter 6, that scared so many people off. You know, why did the crowds in John chapter 6 forsake? They left Jesus. What was it that he preached? And I think what we're going to find today is, when Jesus invites people to come to him, he demands all or nothing. And when he demanded all or nothing of this crowd, they chose nothing. What does he demand of us today? He demands all or nothing. Is he the Lord of all or he's Lord of nothing? I invite you to stand if you're able. John chapter 6, we'll be reading quite a few verses. Beginning at verse number 51. Those of you who've been with us know that we've been going through this passage. And so we've gotten down to verse 51. Jesus says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not. And who should betray him? And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come today and we see this message, which can be confusing to a lot of people, what Jesus is talking about here. 
We pray your Holy Spirit would impress upon our hearts that our Lord demands we be totally consumed with him and to trust him with every ounce of our being if we would have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Not a popular message today, but it's the one that Jesus preached. And we pray by your Holy Spirit that we would make clear what Jesus is saying as the word goes forth today. Help us. Help this preacher, in spite of himself, <clears throat> to be clear about what the message is from your holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So what is this message that Jesus gave that made everybody run away? What is the message here? Well, we see uh, the message in a nutshell in verse number 51. In verse number 51, Jesus says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. This is uh, verse number 50 in reverse. Verse number 50 says, This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am bread come down from heaven. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven. And he says here, If any man eats of this bread, he shall live forever. Now in order to understand this passage, we've got to understand what Jesus means when he speaks of eating of this bread. I am the living bread. I am the bread that gives eternal, that gives spiritual life. I am come down from heaven. You know, we, we saw that that kind of ruffled the feathers of the Jewish religious leaders when Jesus claimed to have come down directly from God, from heaven. So what does it mean? You can't understand the rest of this passage if you don't know what Jesus means when he said, if any man eats of this bread. Let's look at some context here. Verse number 29, Jesus says, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Verse number 35, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me, and believe not. Verse 40, this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have an everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 47, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. And verse 50, this is the bread which came down from heaven, pointing to himself, that a man may eat thereof, and not die. What does it mean to eat of this bread? Well, it means to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. It means to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It means to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of these descriptions can be summed up in one word, and that is faith. Faith. And if we come to the bread of life, the Lord Jesus Christ, we trust Him, we believe on Him, then it says that person shall live forever. Sins forgiven. No condemnation. No separation from holy God in this life and in hell for all of eternity. A relationship with God which begins at salvation and never ends. Eat of this bread, live forever. Well, in order to make it clear, and Jesus is very clear here, he says, the bread that I will give is my flesh. Now notice here, the tenses matter in the scriptures. Will give. This is future tense. This is not talking about his birth, his coming to earth, but it's talking instead about 
Jesus offering his body as a sacrifice on the cross for our sins. And this sacrifice is that which we can trust in and that which gives eternal life. Let's look at the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2. The people that I believe Paul is writing to in the book of Hebrews, under inspiration of God's Spirit, uh, they're having an issue. And their issue is that they, they, they're wanting to go back into the old ways of Judaism that they've been saved out of. Now we know that the Judaism that was practiced by the people in Jesus' day wasn't biblical Judaism. It had turned into this rules-based, you know, trusting in the sacrifices, not what the sacrifices represented, sort of a religion of works. And people like, by nature, religions based on works. Do this, do that, do the other, and you will be right with God. Okay? That's why at the, at the prison where I minister as a chaplain, uh, Islam is a, very, uh, is a very popular religion. You do pray, pray these different times during the day. You, uh, you give your alms if you're able, which most of them are not. You, know, you, you do these things. You confess that Allah is the only God and Muhammad is his prophet. You know, they can't go to Mecca. They're not able to do that being in prison. But you do these things and God will smile on you. That is the kind of religion that people are drawn to. That is the kind of religion that cults promote. You know, uh, you know having done the best I can, we're saved by the grace of God, as, as Mormonism teaches. And other cults have different works-based salvation. But as we see Christianity, we see here that it's faith, it's trusting in the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross. The resurrected Christ that saves us. It's what he has done, not what I do. That's what our salvation is. So Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, Jesus also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Jesus took on flesh so that he could die to reconcile us with God. That's what this passage is saying. Flesh, flesh, his body. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 4 through 7. And remember, Hebrews is written to who? It's written to Jewish people who were tempted to go back into the ways of Judaism. Verse 4. It is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come... In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Verse number 10. By the which will, we are sanctified or made holy through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering, oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Verse 15. Wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them 
After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Now what is the writer of Hebrews saying here? He's saying here, this is the new covenant, the new testament. The old testament was a works-based, you know, you please me, God says, you obey me perfectly, and I will bless you. It's in Exodus chapter 19. And foolishly, the children of Israel said, yeah, we can do that, we can do that. And God gave the law in Exodus chapter 20, which showed them they could not do that. Especially when you get to Exodus 32, where we have the worship of the golden calf, and they broke every one of those commandments that God had just given them in like a month's time. It's amazing how frail and how depraved we are. But there's a new covenant, the New Testament. God, through His Holy Spirit, puts in His people His law. And we have the mind of Christ in the person of the Holy Spirit. And part of this new covenant is their sins, their iniquities, I will remember no more. Forgiveness of sin and eternal life through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. That which the Old Testament sacrifices could never accomplish. And then verses 19 through 22, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest, the presence of God, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, Christ's flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. So as we go back to John chapter 6, when Jesus says, the bread that I will give is my flesh, he's talking future tense. And he's talking about his sacrifice on the cross for our sins. The wages of sin is death. Someone has to make that payment of death for my sins. Either it will be me or it will be Jesus on the cross. And how do we partake of this spiritual food which gives us forgiveness of sins and everlasting life? By faith. Over and over again, Jesus is saying, believe, 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 and trust me. Well, who is this for? He says here in verse 51, which I will give for the life of the world. We'll give. Future tense. The, the, the price had not been paid yet. I will give for the life of the world. Jesus paid the penalty of death for the sins of everyone in the world. His death is sufficient for all. Therefore, John 1, 29. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John 3, 16, read very plainly, is very clear in what it's saying. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what is Jesus offering here in invitation? He's saying, turn from your sins and trust me, the sacrifice for your sins. There on the cross, he paid the penalty of death for our sins and he wants to give us eternal life. All right, so that's the whole thing in a nutshell. But we see here the Jews, and, and we realize when it says the Jews, it's most likely talking about the Jewish religious leaders. And so you had this crowd that was kind of ignorant, <coughs> this crowd that 
had gotten their belly full in the beginning of John 6, and when Jesus left them and crossed the Sea of Galilee, they followed Jesus wanting another fish sandwich. <laughs> they wanted their bellies full. And Jesus says, look, you can get all the fish sandwiches you want. Moses even gave manna in the wilderness. Well, God gave manna in the wilderness. And everybody who ate that manna, what happened to them? They died. But unlike that manna that you want me to bring down right now, I am the bread of life. I give eternal life. Eat of me. Trust in me, and you will never die. Drink of me, and you will never thirst. So verse number 52, the, the Jews, the Jewish religious leaders, at this point Jesus was in the synagogue teaching, therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? You see, for the unsaved person, everything is material. Everything is physical. How can he give us his flesh to eat? These next few verses we're going to read are the largest religious groups in our world the Roman Catholic Church, they read these next few verses and they think it's talking about the bread and the wine at the Mass. They can't see the spiritual in this. They don't see the context in this. How can it be the Mass? How can it be the Lord's Supper? We believe in the Lord's Supper. It says as often as you eat and drink, you remember the Lord's death till He come. We do it once a month here. We believe in the Lord's Supper. We're not taking anything away from communion. But what I'm saying is these verses are not physical. They're spiritual. They're talking about something much deeper. Man would like to reduce these verses to literal flesh and blood. Jesus is referring to his sacrifice on the cross. His giving of his flesh for the sins of humanity. So here he is. Jesus is going to say something very important. He says, verily, verily. <laughs> you see that? That's one red flag. Did you see another word? Except. Remember that except a man be born again? You see the word except. That's another red flag. Two red flags here. Something important. Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood you have no life in you. And you look at the context in John chapter 6 and what Jesus has been saying, it is clear that he is saying, come to me, believe on me, trust in me, be totally consumed with me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Me! Me! I'm not pointing at me. Someone take this video and they'll just say, be consumed with me. No! This is Jesus speaking here. Don't be consumed with any preacher. They'll let you down. Don't be consumed with any person or any pope on earth. They'll let you down. Be consumed with Christ. Eternal life is only through faith in Jesus. 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. This is kind of like the negative, for those who remember old school photography, kind of like the negative of verse number 53. If you don't do it, you have no life. But if you do place your faith in Christ, then you will have eternal life. Just coming at it from a different angle. Verse 55, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. The word meat, as used in the King James Version, means food. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is the only spiritual nourishment for a sinful, empty soul. And when we come to him, says in verse 56, he that eateth my flesh 
and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As those who have placed our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for our sins, we are in Christ and he is in us in the person of the Holy Spirit, his representative who lives within us. Look at 1 John, same human author, same in God who inspired this. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. And this is his commandment, that we should believe.